Healthcare is changing, and Dr. Nancy R.N. is here for you. The topics are many, but each program stands on its own with three key action points for you to learn. Your guide to a healthier you in a changing world. Dr. Nancy R.N. Welcome to Dr. Nancy R.N. Healthy World, Healthy Nation, Healthy You. I'm Nancy Valentine, PhD and registered nurse. And this show is dedicated to you, the healthcare consumer. And today we have another show in the installment on oral cancer. And the title of our show today is The Oral Cancer Foundation, a lifesaver for patients, family, and friends. And we are having two guests today that I think you're going to find extremely interesting that are going to help us understand this really silent killer and how you can get support through the Oral Cancer Foundation. I'm going to be uh, having our show today with Susan Loria, and she is the National Director of Events for the National Cancer Foundation. And we are welcoming back our best friend and, and survivor <laughs> of, of a husband who had a very tough time with oral cancer and has done very well, it is Anita McGinn Natalie, a fine artist who is joining us again to tell her how she found out about the Oral Cancer Foundation and how it helped her. But before we start, the Oral Cancer Foundation helps to bring awareness about oral cancer, which is indeed, as I said, a silent killer. We heard recently from Michael Douglas, who shared with the public about how human papilloma virus really was the cause of his cancer. And most people don't realize that this is a cancer that really strikes not older people, but many, many younger people because of that virus. And we didn't understand until he really helped us bring it out that 75% of all people have this virus in their system, but we don't know why some people contract cancer as a result. So the three key points that we're going to be learning about today and what you're going to be taking away from this show is how to use this information to understand the signs and symptoms of oral cancer. Secondly, you're going to understand how you can really get screened for this when you go to your dentist. And that is a really must-to thing that you have to do when you go to your dentist. And then thirdly, you're going to understand how the Oral Cancer Foundation can help you or those that you know that really need support through this really very difficult disease. I'm happy to just remind everyone that Anita's husband, Clark, who you've met on other shows, has been a tremendous example of survivorship. But he's one of the lucky people because this year, 42,000 Americans alone will contract this disease. And in five years, only 50% of them will be alive. So it's very tough to treat because many people don't even realize they have it for way too long. And that's what we're going to hear about today. Mm -hmm. So Susan, Anita, thank you so much for spending time with us today and helping to educate the public on this, on this illness. So well, Susan, thank welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So tell us about how you got involved and your story about how you have dedicated a very major part of your life to this foundation. Well, almost, uh, se actually seven years ago, uh, my brother David, my oldest brother who was 46 at the time, was diagnosed with stage four tongue cancer. Um, and what led up to that diagnosis is that he had a simple canker sore on his tongue um, and did not know what it was. He just thought it was a canker sore. So at the time, my brother was living in Vermont. So we didn't see him very often, and when we did, he would say he had this sore in his tongue, and we said, oh, it's probably nothing, and he dismissed it. Uh, months went by, and it got worse, and the pain was getting worse, and, um, and he let it go again because he was a healthy person. He was a snowboarder. He was a skier. He was a water skier. He ate organic food. Um, so again, we didn't think anything was was up with this. So um, months, more months went by. We're talking about nine months. We saw him at my brother's wedding and now the pain was in his jaw. The swallowing was more difficult. Uh, the ear pain is increased. So we urged him to go to the doctor, but again, we still did not think that this was oral cancer. I knew nothing of this disease and neither did any of my family members. So he waited even more time before he went. Finally went, stage four, inoperable. Um, they immediately wanted to cut out his tongue, um, and my brother did not want to do that, so he opted to do clinical trials, um, radiation, and chemotherapy. 
um, and he was he passed away a year later after doing um, a year of brachiotherapy and I said clinical trials and brachiotherapy and radiation he actually did lose his tongue so he was unable to eat or speak mm. uh, the last year of his life uh, the pain what I witnessed was horrible and of course as soon as I found out the diagnosis I got on my computer and googled everything I could find out about this disease and unfortunately, I go a little too late. Um, if I had known a, that a canker sore on a tongue could be cancer, my brother would be here today. Right. Uh, more than likely, just minor surgery, uh, radiation, he would be here. So I sort of got a little angry that I didn't know enough about this disease. It was not on television. It was not uh, discussed. No one really knew about it. Um, and then the day he passed away, I decided that I had to do something to let other people know about this disease. So I started a memorial walk for him and I researched uh, foundations and that's how I found the Oral Cancer Foundation. And um, one thing led to another, I, did my, I do a memorial walk and the foundation hired me to help them spread the word and get the, and get the word out there about this disease and help others plan events. Wow, that, that's a pretty compelling mm. story. I'm very sorry for your loss. Yeah, you know, it must have been really tough to lose someone at that very early age of stage of life. Too young, too right. young. And of course he was our oldest brother, so he was our hero in the family. And when you watch somebody suffer the way he did from beginning to end and not know anything about this disease and can't help him in any way, my personality is I had to do something, right. and that's how this well, happened. Well, that's the only good news out of right. this story, exactly. is that you really converted a tremendous loss into something where you could really give back to many, many people, more than you could ever know and count. I try. But that is the purpose of the show, Dr. Nancy RN, because it's really so that you don't have the same experience that Susan had. You know, through these conversations, we are building awareness so that as you understand more, you can go to your computer sooner. You can ask those questions a whole lot sooner. So let's go back and just review a couple of the details of that story. When you said that he had a canker sore, mm -hmm. lots of people don't know what that looks like. Can you describe it? We're not going to show necessarily a picture, but just right. describe it from like when he would show you, gee, I have this little thing on white my tongue. Sore. A white, a white sore. A white sore on his tongue. And most often you'll find red sores. That, you know, There's all different types, but his was a white sore which is, you know, we all get these kind of sores in our mouths at one point or, uh, one point or another. Um, the, the key is that if that sore does not go away within two to three weeks, there's a problem. Because mm -hmm. usually the healing process in your body, it will start going away within a few days. But his was a white sore on the side of his tongue, and that's mm -hmm. all it was for many, many months. And, um, and then obviously the tumor was growing, and that's when the, um, the pain started in the jaw and the ear. Right. So I think the second thing that comes from that is it's, it's there, but it's like sort of an annoyance. Right. It doesn't necessarily have right at the beginning any real signs or symptoms Correct. other than that it is present. Correct. But from we, what you're saying is that it progressed very rapidly. Well, it did. I mean, there, it has been, his took um, from, from the time he got diagnosed, from the time he found the store to the time he got diagnosed, it was almost nine, nine to ten months. Mm -hmm. But again, he didn't realize what that was. So, so the tumor actually was growing that whole time. But yeah, and the sore just got, and it, then it turned red. Mm -hmm. So it was a white sore to begin with and then turned red. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that really reminds me of our discussion with your husband, Clark. I mean, he was going for his annual visit to the dentist so it wasn't like he had a loose tooth in his case it was not a sore it was a loose tooth if you've seen those mm -hmm. shows you know this uh, in detail that he then just felt like he was going for a loose tooth to have it evaluated and when he found out he had cancer that was less than a year too because he was very good about going to his dental appointments he told us yes and there was no pain at all with that loose tooth so th that's another thing about oral cancers can present themselves as lumps or bumps um, anywhere in the oral cavity or the neck and they don't or aren't, they aren't always painful mm -hmm. so it's important that if something doesn't seem right if you have a question about it get it checked out right so I think in terms of the stages, stage four is really the most progressed of any cancer. So when you hear that term stage one, two, three, and four, by the time you get to four, treatment is really very limited because the cancer has really taken hold at whatever point in the body it may be, depending on that particular cancer. Mm -hmm. So just if you could roll the camera of life backward, where, when do you think he was at stage one and two? 
He was at probably stage one, probably within a month or two of finding that store. Mm -hmm. He was he was at that early stage because it was not, as Anita pointed out, it wasn't painful at that point. It was just a little sore that he had. And so I'm going to assume at that point he was probably stage one, um, at the, you know, between a month or two of finding that. And then just he let it go. And as Anita just said, that you have to go get these things checked out. But if you don't know what that is, and if you're not aware of the signs and symptoms of oral cancer, and it is painless, it's something that people do let go. Right. Because not enough information out there to know that, that could be cancer. Right. Not always, obviously, but it could be cancer. Right. And I think that, you know, any death at any age is really a loss for any person, obviously, that, that's affected or for their family and friends. But I think the point that we're making with this cancer is that, as in Susan's brother's situation, you know, he's less than 50 years old, he's 40, he's, you know, he's active, he's having a wonderful life. All the more reason that many times people put off, you know, going and having things checked out. So in terms of your brother, if he had only gone in that first, say, 30 to 60 days, which goes by very quickly, mm -hmm. unless you're paying attention, right. he would have had a very different outcome. Very different. I mean, we I've known many people through the foundation at stage one, had very minimal uh, radiation, um, minor surgery on the tongue, um, nothing compared to what at stage two and above go right. on. Um, so yes, I truly believe he'd be here today. Right. He, he would not, and the suffering that he experienced during that year, I've never seen, I've seen a lot of cancer. I've never seen someone lose their tongue. I've never seen, you know, he was hooked up, he had a trach, he had uh, oxygen, he couldn't eat, he had a right, he couldn't speak. I've never seen anything like that. So it, had, it definitely changed me and moved me. It mm -hmm. really, it did. And, I, and then I got angry because I didn't know anything about this mm -hmm. disease. We hear about so many cancers and we don't hear about head and neck, which is the fastest growing cancer today. That's very interesting. And I think that we are building awareness. Uh, and I think that we will get into the discussion with Susan and Anita, who is really partnering with her to really raise this awareness with some of their activities. So let's go back to when you did your own research and you came uh, to the Oral Cancer Foundation. Mm -hmm. What did you do? Did you call them up? I mean, tell us the, just sort of that step in the process for you. Well, I did. I, I, I was just on my computer night and day trying to find information to see how I could help my brother. And then I, I did find the Oral Cancer Foundation, which again, there weren't too many organizations out there de dedicated to this disease. So I did actually speak to Brian Hill, who is the founder of OCF and who is also a stage four survivor. And we had lengthy conversations about what the foundation can do and what, and what they do, because I was raising money at that time. I was organizing my first event for my, in my brother's name, and I wanted to you know, donate that money to an organization that was going to bring awareness to this disease. So um, I did find out that OCF, a small nonprofit, donates most of the money that they raise to research to find out what we could do to find the disease at its mm -hmm. earliest stages and why do we get oral cancer. So, and after speaking with him and him being a stage four survivor, I found this was the right fit for me because this is, this is what I wanted. I wanted attention to the disease. I wanted research done. Um, the Oral Cancer Foundation doesn't say they're going to, you know, cure oral cancer. We're trying to find it early enough mm -hmm. to treat it early so people can, you know, not be disfigured, save their tongues and not go through what people go through. And that's, that's really how I got involved with the foundation, through talking to Brian Hill. That's great. Let's talk about Brian Hill because I heard Susan say that he is a stage four survivor. So as small a percentage as that may be, I think it's really important for us to hear about that because there may be viewers watching this that really are saying, gosh, I think I have some of these signs and symptoms, but if they hear of her brother's death, they may not want to go and get screened even now. They would think, I don't want to lose my tongue, I don't want right. to go through that kind of torture and I'd rather just die. So tell us what you know about Brian's experience. Well, Brian, I think his story is that he woke up, he was, he was actually semi-retired, I believe, at the time, and he had a lump on the side of his neck and just appeared there. And it just, you know, and it was a hard lump. And uh, he went to the doctor, obviously, and it was quite large, I believe, at the time. And he got in there, and again, it was too, it was, he didn't realize it was growing all that time. By the time he went to the doctor, it was stage four, and he went through a series of radiation, and um, you know, and he, but he survived because he's very lucky to have survived number one, stage four. 
Um, but he also, at that point, had nowhere to go to find that information for mm -hmm. his, his cancer. Mm -hmm. So he took the step to create the foundation. So this is how, you know, this is how it's working, is that when you need information and you don't have it, people are starting and creating it and, you know, trying to help other people. So that's how, you know, that's what he did. And that's, now he's helping millions of other people with the same thing that just don't know that's and have no resources right. to that's go to. Right, that's a mm -hmm. really heartwarming yes. story. And mm -hmm. had no resources. So he had created no this resource. Yes, he did. He created because he had no support for him. He had no one that, you know, to, to talk to about. And he, he felt that there had to be an avenue where people can go to to find the information. Thank you. Well, since one of our takeaways from this show is are going to be the signs and symptoms, can you just walk us through the signs and symptoms? Sure. Um, the the normal signs of oral cancer is if you're if you're hoarse for a few. This is all within a few weeks. If hoarseness in your throat doesn't go away, any lump, anything, inflammation in your neck, uh, sores on your tongue, red spots, a sore throat for longer than you should have, any kind of uh, pain in your ear, in your jaw. Uh, anything like that, that is an early sign of oral cancer. Right. So you need to go to the doctor quickly and, and, and get that checked out. Right. So, but usually it's the, it's the spots, it's the soreness, it's the hoarseness, it's the jaw pain, ear pain, anything, and any swelling in your neck. Right. I think this is really a good tip for you, that when you have any of those, it may not be cancer. It right. may mm -hmm. not be oral cancer. Right. But I think what we're hearing is it's the duration you know, if you have sort of a small lump, you may just have like a sore throat and, you know, your uh, glands are swollen. But if in a, in a week or two you still have that, you really do need to go to your doctor because you need to find out what this is. It may be a transient situation, meaning it's going to go away quickly. It's going to self-heal. But you may be actually your own best friend by really getting that checked out and finding out if it is anything more That's serious. Because most of the time it probably is not oral cancer. Right. But as you said, it's the length of time that you have it because the healing process is pretty quick in a human being. So if that is not going away and not getting better within a few weeks, that is a, that's a sign. You need to get it checked out. And it could be nothing. Right. And most often it is nothing. Um, but, you know, but it can be. So it's better to get it checked out and, 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 and clear the path. Right. So that is if you have any kind of symptoms that you are suspicious of. But you also promised that you would tell us about the screening and what the screening entails. Right. The screening, if you're, your dentist should be doing an oral cancer screening on you at every visit. So normally we go twice a year to the dentist. Every time you go to that dentist, you should be getting a screening. Usually the screening will entail, they should be feeling your lymph nodes and your neck and the back of your neck. They should be taking your tongue and lifting it up, moving it side to side so they could see underneath your tongue. Checking your cheeks, checking your jaw, and just, and that's basically, and then checking the roof of your mouth, the bottom, and just taking the tongue and moving it all around. Because mm -hmm. most of the time, uh, the stores will be in the back of the tongue and underneath the tongue as well. So it's, you have to move it and lift it up and move it. It takes three minutes in a dental office. And if your dentist is not doing it, you need to ask them to do it. It takes really literally three to five minutes to do an oral cancer screening. You know, I'm really glad that you told us about that because when I go to the dentist, they do that, but I didn't know they were doing the oral cancer and screening. They be telling you that they're doing an oral no, cancer screening. No, they just screening. you know did that with the, with the gauze and yes. the tongue movement. Mm -hmm. Right. And I didn't know what they were looking for. Like maybe I didn't brush my teeth. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but that's what they should be doing. And it's very it's very common. A lot of dentists still do not do oral cancer screenings. And that is one of the uphill battles that we are finding with uh, working with doing these events is that we're finding that a lot of dental offices do not do them, and a lot of them, as you said, don't even tell you what they're doing. So you would know that that's what that is. Well, you know, I'm wondering if they should be adding something to that. They should, do you think they should be asking you, do you have any pain or Absolutely. soreness? Absolutely. Absolutely. They should I've, be asking you. I've gone to you. different dentists. Not one person has ever asked me that. Absolutely. And especially if you are a smoker, if you are a smoker, they should be asking you that even more because smoking and alcohol, heavy alcohol use are major uh, reasons for oral cancer and now HPV is now the number one but if you are a smoker and they should be asking you that because you are more at risk for right, getting oral right, cancer. Right. So I think that you know what we're trying to help you do with this Dr. Nancy RN show is help turn you into a patient advocate for yourself. So I think that based on this show you should be asking your dentist not only to do that uh, screening if they are not 
And if they are doing the screening, this is what I'm going to do based on this conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask them if they could start asking me and their other patients, do you have pain, soreness, anything in your mouth or neck area Absolutely. that you would be concerned about. Mm -hmm. This is not a scare tactic. No. This is a screening. Mm -hmm. So the more you have that dialogue, with your treatment team, whoever that may be. It could be the dental hygienist. It may not be the dentist. It depends right. on what you're there for. That's that really, right. I think, is really adds to the dialogue and really helps to deepen that screening so that you really get the best screening possible. Absolutely, and it is painless, and it doesn't. It only takes a few extra minutes for them to do it, and you are correct. Dental hygienists are probably the ones that actually will do the screening more often, but the dentist should be also overseeing that. But that's all it takes is just a few minutes and asking questions and and you know not everybody's going to get oral cancer but why not do something to prevent another to prevent a disease that you know that you right. can get right. so it, it just makes sense right right just makes sense you know what I think is another thing to think about in this discussion is that there are lots of cancers and they can happen in different parts of your body they can happen in your your trunk uh, uh, they can happen in different places that are less easy to, to spot. What I'm hearing is that when it's in your mouth, it's in your neck, it's in your cheeks, your throat, you're looking at yourself most Absolutely. of the time every day, even mm -hmm. if it's just while you're brushing your teeth, you're looking in the mirror. Mm -hmm. These are the cancers that in some ways could be the most obvious. Absolutely. But because we are not aware of it, because our awareness levels are low in general, that's why people don't like get it. They don't like notice it and then do something about it. So I think this is really an important mm -hmm. point to bring out that you know you are looking at this part of your body and this part of your body should be easier to assess than perhaps some other parts of your body. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there's something in your mouth that's not supposed to be there. That's, that's the warning sign. We need to get it checked. And, um, and as you said, a lot of cancers, you don't know what's going on in your body. You cannot see what's happening, but you can see oral cancer. I mean, you can see potential oral cancer if there's something in right, your mouth. Right, right. Um, but absolutely, if it's there, get it checked out. That's Very all good. you have to do. Very good. Well, mm -hmm. I think you've given us a tremendous amount of information, Susan. I'm, I'm learning myself, so I'm very grateful for you to do this Great. with us. But I want to ask Anita now, because our third point today is how you could use the Oral Cancer Foundation for a resource, either for self, family, friends, community, and tell us how you basically stumbled across it. I did stumble across it. In fact, I, my husband had already had his uh, major surgery, his initial surgery, and radiation treatment, but he was having some complications. And those complications were puzzling to me, and I was trying to find out a little more information about what could be expected in the long term for him. And in my search on the internet, I came across the Oral Cancer Foundation, was completely unaware that this even existed, and I was amazed at the amount of information available to me on that site. I read for hours the first time I was on. Now, since then, that was um, four, three or four years ago, mm -hmm. since then, I would say there's probably three or four times more information on that website today, there's, there's, because there's new information coming mm -hmm. forward all the time. I also discovered the forum, which is a support system for patients and family members who have experienced oral cancer. And out of that forum, I formed bonds and relationships and friendships, one of which is with Susan. <laughs> I met Susan at an oral cancer uh, awareness walk in Philadelphia that I learned about through the Oral Cancer Foundation's website. Okay. And I attended that um, walk, met Susan, she told me her story, and then I went to her walk in the following September. And I, since then, have, like I said, formed relationships and bonds with people in the forum mm -hmm. and have initially, I was looking for information and it slowly shifts to now you become one who helps others. Right. So there's that support is just remarkable. Um, I've been able to take that uh, that involvement with the Oral Cancer Foundation another step further. I wasn't able to attend one of Susan's walks. I think it was the second one, Susan. I believe the, so. yes, yes, the second year. Right. And I felt really bad about that because I really wanted to stay invo involved, but we were being, going to be out of town. And mm. I said to Susan, "Would you be? Would you be willing or interested in me donating one of my paintings for your walk?" I'm sorry, I can't be there. Well, she was thrilled about that, and that actually started a new focus for me. So this is, this is the third year I'm donating a painting to Susan's I'm Walk. Thrilled. And I've <laughs> donated paintings to 
San Antonio, Colorado. I have Houston coming up. I have a number of cities that are in line for re to receive my paintings this year. Mm -hmm. So it's really blossomed, and it's giving me a wonderful way to focus my talent and energies into helping the Oral Cancer Foundation reach more people. That is a beautiful story. And speaking of talent, mm -hmm. I think uh, Anita, as you know, really they're clamoring for her paintings at these <laughs> at these walks. So I, I want to show you her latest. <laughs> Tell us about this this particular painting that you're donating to the upcoming walk. Well, Susan's brother David was an avid snowboarder, outdoorsman, mm -hmm. and also graphic designer mm -hmm. artist himself. Yes, so I was. felt a sort of a, a real kinship with him mm -hmm. ha after hearing that story and. Uh, I just I had this painting that I had done of my son many years ago I and I had sold it and he, my sons are both snowboarders I had sold it and I thought I think I'm going to do that painting again and title it a little differently so, so that it's uniquely for Susan and so that's how this painting came up and I, I thought it was a little bit more of a connection to what oh, David yeah. did to his right. passion in life right um, his, his passion for snowboarding so that is called Beautiful. showing off too. <laughs> <laughs> that is, it's delightful. Yes, Thank you. Thank Thank you. to have it. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, Anita told us in a, a prior show about the fact that as she is a fine artist and she was working also in an antique store, she had a full blossoming career when her husband's care really shifted her entire life. So what I'm hearing is that you really are using your talent and you're giving your talent back in a new way with a new focus. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the, that's really interesting because when my husband was very sick, I wasn't able to spend much time painting. And as he recovered, I started getting back into it. And my focus is a little different. It's, you know, painting has to take on a, a, a different meaning for me. It, it, I just had to after what we went right. through. And after donating a few paintings to Susan's Walks, I thought, this is what I want to do. So I contacted Brian Hill with my idea, and I said, do you, is this a, do you, do you think that he loved the idea? Mm -hmm. So he has been very helpful to me, and um, I had okay. done a little press release, which he posted on the, the news feed on mm -hmm. the Oral Cancer Foundation a couple of months ago, which was really thrilling for me. So yeah. um, it, it gives my painting a direction. Right. Instead of just painting for painting's sake, I feel like now my painting is helping others. Right. So you're, you know, any artist has to have a passion for what they do, but this is with a renewed passion. I just want to mm -hmm. point out this um, shirt they're have with for one of their walks, which is this beautiful. This happens to be one of my favorite colors. <laughs> you know, a shirt for for awareness building. Uh, an awareness building yes. bracelet. Yes. There are save the dates um, in September. There's going to be another walk. Uh, I hope we have the show out by then. Maybe you'll get to the walk. And then tell us about those brochures. Yeah, this is information that the Oral Cancer Foundation passes out to anybody interested. You, these are free if you come to one of our walks and one of our events. We hand these out. These are information about the foundation, which is www.oralcancer.org. It gives you information. It has the signs and symptoms of oral cancer. So you have it here, um, and then also uh, this one is what you need, actually this one's what you need to know about oral cancer, and this one is what you need to know about the foundation, and how we can help you in the early stages or throughout your battle. We can give you support. You know what? I wonder if we shouldn't ask the dentist to sort of put this in their offices. Well, we do. We One of my missions is, as uh, events, we I will hit every dental office I could possibly can. I have these in my car, and I hand them out, as well as all of our organizers and all of our volunteers. Without our volunteers, we would not be here. Right. In fact, I've taken these and also distributed these to dental office, prosthodontists. Yes. All, there's a, uh, there's just a, so many people to, right. who can benefit right. from How this. And they're very willing to take this. Yes. Well, yeah. I'm going to ask our viewers to get in touch with uh, Susan. Her contact information is on the web. And maybe you could take this to your dentist Absolutely. and you, we could start a little army of people like you helping us to get this word out because it's going to save perhaps your life and the life of the people that you love and maybe someone that you never even met before. I want to thank the two of you. Thank we you. have covered today through, through you. your knowledge and your support the signs and symptoms of oral cancer. We've talked about the screening that must be done when you go to your dentist, even for something as simple as getting your teeth cleaned. Mm -hmm. right. And we've talked about the foundation as a resource that really, you told me, saved your life in some of those early morning hours Absolutely. when Anita was not only looking for information, but she was looking for friendship. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, Susan. Thank you this has been much. delightful. You, I've learned a lot, and I hope you have too. Thank you, and join us again. I hope you enjoyed our conversation today and that the information will help you in meeting your health goals. Catch this program and other conversations on the website, drnancyrn.com. Or you can write to me as well. I welcome your comments and feedback. Thank you for listening and join us again. And remember, with health, all things are possible.